I'd like to turn this honey badger M into an extra variant. And it's going to be a shorter honey badger. It's going to be based on the same M version, which I got over here. And I want to reduce, reduce the firepower by two guns and see if I can shorten the, the frame and <clears throat> make it a bit faster. And I'm going to save this one as the honey badger MU. The U stands in Russian, it's an abbreviation for shortened. In the way um, Russian or Soviet weapon systems are named. For example, a famous example is the AKS 74U, which is the shortened AK 74 <clears throat> with a shorter barrel and it has a U at the end. So let's get started.
I think I'm keeping this as an. It's a really good one. So I'm going to explain what I, what I what I was trying to do. My first goal was to reduce the guns from seven to five, and that would reduce the logistics behind the weapon too. Which means uh, if you have fewer guns, you need fewer ammo, you need fewer power, you need fewer crew compartments, and fewer escape pods. And that allows me to shorten the frame. Then I started shortening the frame on both sides. And how am I? I still didn't have enough thrust. It was marginally faster than a regular honey badger at reduced firepower, but it was still too slow to really dodge missiles and all that. Then I started to add extra thrusters, which also increased the cost. Then I tried using the guns to, I think, four guns. Then I started using them against larger ships. I noticed four or five hundred millimeter guns, they're not doing much against, against a larger ship. Then I thought, hey, I'm going to upgrade it against giving it 130 millimeter guns. Because the idea was I take 130 millimeter, four of them, or three of them, and if I'm fast enough, I get close to large ships and unload on it. However, that would have made the ship cost over 30,000, more than a regular honey badger. And then I kept trying against medium ships and large ships, and I noticed, okay, what if I don't use this ship against large ships? What if I accept its role to be medium and smaller ships? Then I could reduce it down to three guns, because three guns, 100 millimeter, they're good enough to... I think smaller ships with little armor get chopped, chopped to pieces really quickly in one salvo. And larger ships, if you get past the armor, the larger I mean medium ships than really small ones. That was sort of um, functioning as, as I wanted it to. Then I reconfigured the thrusters a bit, added a bit of thrust, kept the fuel balance about eight, 900,000. Then I reduced the, um, the size of the frame to save some weight and money. And yeah, I think right now it's really really working. It's fast enough to dodge enemy fire, and it's cheap enough. It's below twenty thousand, and I was able to squeeze into extra missiles over here. Now the goal behind those missiles is that <clears throat> early in combat, if you catch them on the ground, you can fire off two of those, and they're likely going to hit before the enemy starts reacting if they're still sleeping. And even if they're not sleeping. Before you get in close proximity, the volume of fire from the enemy ships is really low, so you can still get them. It works really well against smaller ships that don't have anti-air defense systems. 
While this increases the cost to 1200 and it's a one-time use until you refuel it, if one of those hits a medium or small ship, it can take it out one hit. And I've seen two of those take out a Nomad once, because one went through the armor and the second one went through the um, hit the main thrust, I got lucky and killed it. I had to do a compromise here. I had to um, put a hole in the armor here so the um, frame is connected to the interior power lines because you can't do that through the armor. So that's a weak point in the ship. Oh, I'm really liking the whole package right now. It's below 20,000. And I had to reconfigure the, the flare dispensers because the flare suspends only in this direction over here. And the missile comes from above. It will go through the ship to try to get to the flare. So I had to reconfigure to push it out to the side. What I really like about this, um, about Hive Lead, is that you don't have just the consideration how good it is in, in real-time combat, but also you have the consideration about how does it do on a strategic level with all logistics involved. How cheap is the ship? How cheap is it to repair, to refuel? And how fast can it fly so it can um, get the drop on, on garrison and cities? And it's not meant to replace the Honey Badger M. It's... it's uh, Different variant, which I'm going to use for different purposes in new campaigns. So yeah, so I think that's going to be a good design, and we'll see in the campaign how it's going to work out. I'm going to um, put this into my Google Drive folder, so you can download it for yourself if you and try it out if you like. And this should conclude the video. And as always, thanks for watching.